All right, y'all, welcome to the show. So I got a fun one for you today. Uh, we're going to be all over the place. So I have some Daily Wire goofballs and goons doing what they do, still talking about LGBTQ issues in the year of our Lord 2023, from a conservative perspective, of course. Um, the epidemic of child labor, we're going to get into that. Republicans in Ohio looked at uh, the recent direct ballot initiative, which legalized recreational weed, and they were like, how about no? How about not on our watch? We're going to go ahead and try to roll that back. So we'll talk about that. And then later on, the very disturbing extremist connections of the Speaker of the House, the new Speaker of the House. This guy keeps getting darker and weirder every single day. And then later on in the show, I got some wacky polls for you that I've been thinking a lot about. So we'll talk about all that and much more. Uh, everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps out massively in the algorithm and it doesn't cost you anything at all. I'm trying to continue to grow the community. And by the way, we're close to 1,100,000 subs. We're trying to get over that uh, 1,100,000 mark. So hook a brother up with that. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it here. So Matt Walsh is, uh, I would go as far as to say the most boring host on The Daily Wire. You have Michael Knowles, who strikes me as a deep closet case. Uh, you have Ben Shapiro, who's just annoying. Um, and Matt Walsh is like this fake, uh, what's the name of that guy again? Oh my God, I'm blanking on it. The, there's the Tim Allen show, Home Improvement. And you got, they have the show Tool Time within the show. And you got like Al is his co-host and he's got the beard. Uh, and I'm not talking about that guy because he's cool. I'm, forget, I'm forgetting Richard Karn or something like that is his name. Everybody likes that guy. He's cool. Uh, I'm thinking of the, what's Bob Vila? Bob Vila. This guy reminds me of like conservative Bob Vila. He's trying to play the role with his like flannel shirt. And, me, bro, I'm a tough guy. I'm a, I'm a macho man. That's what I am. Well, anyway, here he is on his show in the year of our Lord, 2023, talking about gay people. And uh, look at what he says, man. This is wild. Now, if you are not the perceptive sort, you might listen to all this and say, well, this is unfair to gay couples. What if they want to... Uh, to have children. What, what are they supposed to do? Don't we need to have some kind of system in place to help them achieve their parenthood dreams? The answer to that question is no, we don't. Homosexual unions are sterile by their nature. It's not an exception to the rule when they are. It's not the result of sickness or genetic defect when a homosexual couple is unable to have children. None of them are able or have ever been able or ever will be able. That is a sign from nature, about as glaring and obvious as signs as you can ever see, that gay couples are not meant to have kids. Uh, uh, okay, okay. There are plenty of heterosexual couples that can't have kids. Should they not be allowed to adopt, for example? Should they not be allowed to try whatever scientific methods are available to make that reality come about? Like, what are you talking about? What about old people? What about, you know, a woman who's gone through menopause? Sh should she never be in a maternal role because she's old? Oh, these arguments are so weak, but we're just getting warmed up. They're not meant to have kids because they cannot ever have kids because kids are meant to have both a mom and a dad. Now, it's true that plenty of kids end up with just one of those or sometimes none, but this just means that something went wrong. In that case, you do your best, the best you can to compensate. But with surrogacy, we are designing children from the outset to be motherless or fatherless. We are intentionally depriving them um, of, of, of what they are supposed to have. You know, it's true that some children grow up with one arm or no arms, but that obviously doesn't make it any more horrific or any less horrific or barbaric to intentionally chop a child's arm off. Oh my God. What a comparison. What a comparison. He's like, look, a child can be born with one arm or no arms, but that's obviously like defective and not preferable. So a child being raised by like two gay parents that's like the same thing. It's like defective and it's not preferable. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. What a dark, dark person. What a dark person. You know, the fact that some children end up that way, does, yes, but a child is supposed to have two arms at birth. And you, to intentionally design a child to only have one, we would all agree it's like, it's, it's like mad scientist uh, horror. But this is essentially what we're doing with commercial surrogacy. Ugh. So having gay couples raise kids is, is, is like mad scientist horror show stuff. Jesus, man, like, what do, you need, what do you need to raise a kid? You need to want to do it, and you need 
love and understanding and to like have your shit together enough to be a decent role model. That's all. That's all. But in his mind, he's like, if you're gay, I'm ruling you out. I'm ruling you out. It's just, and I wonder if he would deny that he's a bigot against gay people. I wonder if he would deny that. And only it's worse because it's far better for a child to be raised lacking one of his arms than to be raised lacking one of his parents. What? <laughs> it's far better for a kid to be raised lacking one of his arms than lacking one of his parents. I don't think that's true, man. <laughs> There's plenty of people who become amazing, productive, happy members of society who were raised by, like, one, you know, their mom or their dad. And, like, yeah, sometimes it takes a village and you need help, but there's plenty of people who've come out on the other side of that and done well. It is very difficult to, to you know, put all the pieces together with one limb. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying, I think your odds coming from a single parent household, but look, that's not even the point. The point he's trying to make is like with gay parents, like you should rather be born with one arm or no arms than have gay parents, which is insane because all of the studies that I've seen on this indicate not only do the kids of gay parents tend to do well, in some ways they statistically do better. Like in school, for example, I believe there was a study on this that came out like five years ago or a little more than that that talked about how the kids of gay parents uh, did exceedingly well in school. But then I'm sure he would look at that and say, well, I don't care. That metric is stupid. Look, he just has a, a, a principled belief against anybody in the LGBTQ community. He thinks you're defective. He thinks you're degenerate. He thinks it's like a... a a mind virus or a poison or a disease. And look, it's all based on what? It's all based on the fact that he's a religious freak, right? That's all it is. That's all it is. It's not based in logic or rationale. There's nothing like objectively wrong with preferring somebody of the same sex as a mate. He just views it through a religious lens. And he's an extremist. He's a fundamentalist. That's why I will never applaud and cheer when we get these birth announcements from gay couples. Because I'm more concerned about what the child needs than what those men want. Oh, my God. By the way, this is quite a shot at, like, Dave Rubin, for example. Dave Rubin and his husband, I think he they have two, two kids, is it? I think it is. And they did surrogacy. And, you know, Dave is so sad because he got a slap in the face. And he got a, a stark reminder of just how much he's not accepted in the conservative political community. But then what did he do? He just moved forward and pretended like they didn't just spit in his eye. I mean, you had people calling him an abomination in the eyes of God, like high-level political commentators. Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, what's the other guy? Oh, I'm blanking on his name. Mark Dice. He was saying, like, you're an abomination in the eyes of God. You're disgraceful. This shouldn't be allowed. You shouldn't be allowed to raise these kids. <clears throat> and obviously, they made the decision. So they're very concerned. They want to raise a happy, healthy kid. They want to do a good job. And I have all, all sorts of political issues with Dave Rubin. I think he's a terrible guy politically, but that's to say nothing of how he is with his kids, right? We have no idea how he is with his kids. But these people are saying, no, they should be ruled out. You shouldn't even be allowed to do it. And according to Matt Walsh, it would be better for that kid to have one arm or no arms than to have you guys as parents. So I, I, what I would say to Dave Rubin is, you're just going to sit there and bleed, or are you going to respond and react to this? The fact of the matter is the only people coming to Dave Rubin's defense at the time when he announced the surrogacy with his husband, it was the left, the left who despises him. But we all came out and said, let them live, right? Let them live. They're doing this because they want to do this. They could be great parents. We don't know, but it's not uh, the job or the business of any conservative Republican religious theocrat freak to control the personal lives of gay couples. But look, he if he had his way, if Matt Walsh had his way, he would literally ban it. He would use force of law to say gay parents can't adopt. They can't do surrogacy. They just can't be parents. Because he thinks you're defective and you're degenerate and you're hurting the kid. All of the evidence says the opposite. You're not hurting the kid at all. In many instances, you're helping the kids. But he doesn't care. Again, it's a religious, fundamentalist, principled position. And all the evidence and the data comes second. All the humanity and the empathy comes never. But this is his take. God, it's 2023. This is what he's talking about right now. This is what he's talking about. 
You're still doing the whole I hate gay people shtick in 2023? This shit is so like 1997, homie. Get with it. I mean, it was a decade ago that we got gay marriage in the U.S. A decade. And he's still doing this. Which, by the way, does lead to some eyebrow raising uh, considerations here, right? Because how many times have we seen it? The, the loudest and the most aggressive anti-gay voices, whether they be religious people, pastors, preachers, Republican politicians, etc. The ones who are most vitriolic and most hateful and most obsessed with the issue are the ones who yearn the deepest for cock. Now, I don't know if that's the case with Matt Walsh, but I'm just saying I have my suspicions since, again, in the year of our Lord 2023, this is what you're talking about. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.